Welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina, and I want to walk you through how I'm going to transform this dresser and all the techniques and supplies that I'm going to use. I've received a lot of comments in regards to salt wash and chalk paint mix. So I would like to demonstrate for you a really good base with the salt wash and chalk paint and walk you through some of the details. So again, what's really key with making the salt wash is, is my can already previously opened? We know with any type of opening of the can, there's always that chance of it will have evaporation, which now makes the paint itself a little bit thicker. Fresh can of paint, you should be good to go with a good shake and a stir. Add your salt wash, 50-50. If you feel that because the can is open or your container of paint is already opened, pour it out separately, add your salt wash. If you need, it's too thick, it's the consistency does not have this nice flow to it, then add a little bit more paint in your measuring cup, take a little bit of water, stir it a bit more, add it. And where you're going all the time is that nice, like we're gonna make a nice cake because we've got a nice flow here. If, if I'm really pushing this and it's really cakey, no, it's, it's too thick. So I really hope that helps. I've also made a mix of the Paris Grey chalk paint and salt wash in 50-50. I wanted to show you up close what the textures look like with the salt wash and chalk paint mix. And as you can see, you can play with your textures. If you want to make high points or low points, or if for any reason you've put too much on an area and you just want to knock it down a little bit, there's definitely a lot of forgiveness with the textures of salt wash. The application process is literally just stippling. You're stippling and tapping your brush with the salt wash mix. So now I wanna show you that you can shade with chalk paint using a small little tiny chippy brush and of course my Starbucks. I am literally just using straight out of the can that black dark gray chalk paint and I am stippling it on my salt wash Paris gray mix and I'm shadowing with it so you can blend chalk paint and salt wash so easily for the fact that it has texture it doesn't limit you for blending so the original color of salt wash chalk paint mix I made is using the Annie Salone chalk paint in Chateau Grey and I'm blending it with the Paris Gray. And as you can see in this demonstration, it is so easy to blend with the textures. If anything, it's a little easier. I'm gonna show you some really, really fun techniques and tips and tricks for not only shadowing, but to really give an authentic illusion of old world finish. When creating a darker shadow, I always like to stick around the edges and corners of a furniture piece. And the best advice I can give you with any kind of shadowing or highlights or lowlights being created within your chalk paint colors is how your tactile touch is with your paintbrush. I will put it on, it's not forceful, but as I continue to just shadow it out, my actual touch of my bristles to the paint become lighter and lighter. You also want to go back and forth in very, very short spurts. So you don't want to go too far over, but you don't want to make them too short. You want to bring those colors in together. This is just our first layer and creating our color design. The other thing I really want to show you on this tutorial today is I'm going to go ahead and stain this top. And one of my favorites is the Minwax um, Aged Oak. If you're just going to do a couple of quick projects, I recommend just getting the smaller version of the gel stain. You don't need to make a larger purchase if not necessary. 
as well as with chalk paints. They also come in the smaller sample sizes. So if you are doing a one-off project, don't feel that you need to buy big tins at anywhere from $30 to $50 a tin. Just buy the sample sizes. As you can see, gel stain is super easy. You literally just apply it on. The only thing I recommend is probably making your brush strokes in one direction. So I generally just go on a very simple horizontal direction and stroke one way. I have a tendency to put it in a little bit more liberated than you probably need to, but I really like the dark, rich look. If your furniture piece or the wood that you're applying the gel stain is in really good condition, you can just grab a clean cloth and wipe it back if you'd like to have the aged oak a little bit lighter. But because my piece is pretty banged up, I want it to be as dark as possible. And I'm also even going to darken my edges by putting in a second application and feathering it out all around the edges just to give that nice worn kind of look with the wood tone. I've demonstrated in my previous tutorials that if you have any residual paint or even if it's a fully painted surface, you can still put the gel stain over top and still get a beautiful look. As you can see, I sanded down this piece, but I didn't take all of the paint off of all the tiny detail around the wood carvings, but you won't even see that with this gel stain. That's the beautiful component. Your prep work is fairly minimal when working with a gel stain versus just a regular wood stain. Just make sure that the surface you are going to apply the gel stain is cleaned well and dust free. The drying time for gel stain varies. It depends how much you've put on. Just like myself, I'm a little bit more liberated with it or how many applications you've done. It'll vary from a few hours to say 24, 48 hours. It does create a beautiful look and there's so many beautiful wood tone colors to choose from. And I generally use Minwax, but general finishes also creates a really good quality gel stain. So using some modeling clay, I decided I wanted to put a really fun border around the frame of my drawers using the IOD molding trays. These are an excellent quality molding tray and all you're doing, it's so easy, is you're placing the molding clay inside of the tray and you're literally flattening it as much as possible and that's what's going to give you that detail and use something with a really really clean sharp edge just to take any excess for the back and i personally like working with these when they're about half dry so that way when i'm placing them i can go ahead and mold them the way i'd like so using the on fleur brown a primer red and I'm gonna use a country gray. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a base color. It's actually gonna look kinda of ugly with what you're seeing here, but there is a little method to my madness and I'll explain as we go. So I wanna use these molds on the drawer fronts and with the colors I've already chosen for the overall base of the dresser, I'd like to have a little bit of contrast underneath because as we get a little bit further along, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna blend all of this together. And I promise it will make sense. I wanted the paint to kind of come across a little bit worn down and rustic looking. So you don't have to be overly perfect about this. What I'm really doing is just creating uh, a deeper illusion that these are separate from the overall look. But as we continue on, I'm going to show you how I'm going to blend it in together and you're going to see that little bit of contrast coming through. So again, you don't have to be too particular about this step. You just want to color them up to throw that contrast in. The 
The No More Nails is my preference when I'm working with molds and placing them onto furniture. And again, I didn't want my molds to be completely dry. And the reason is I can push them in together and give a more natural look that it's all one strip rather than several. And this just allows you to play with that clay um, before it's completely firm and dry. And I have placed the drawers so they are on a um, horizontal, but as soon as I'm done placing with the No More Nails, it's almost instantaneous. So I can go ahead and place my drawer fronts back to the um, vertical plane that I had and they're not going to drop down so not to worry about that I just found that it was a little bit easier to place with the drawer fronts out now I want to get into my top coat and this is where I'm going to blend those IOD molds and I'm going back to the exact same colors of the salt wash mixes of Paris Gray and Chateau Gray. And I'm just going to keep randomly blending in on top of those molds. But I'm gonna show you as it starts to come together and I'm gonna create more shadowing. And I'm even gonna add in a little bit of the En Fleur brown chalk paint with my shadowing. I'm just using an old chippy brush, but you can use inexpensive artist brush when you're doing those shadowings. I'm really looking forward to showing you how I'm going to use dry milk paints as we get further along the project and how that's really going to create this really, really nostalgic rustic look. The one thing that I absolutely love about blending with the salt wash textures is there's a little bit of this dry brushing going on because I'm not using any water. I normally will use a spray water bottle when I'm blending with chalk paints, but with all this texture, it seems to lock into color and allow movement with that added texture that I don't need to use water as I'm blending. So this makes for a very simple way to blend. And if anything, as I mentioned before, a little bit easier. So now you can see why I wanted the contrast of the IOD molds. So that middle drawer, I've just placed my second layer on and you can kind of start to see it coming together now that I'm placing my final coat and doing that little bit more shadowing. You truly can't go wrong. If you've added too much of one color or too much of another color, grab the opposite colors you're using and just keep tapping it in and out until you get the shading and the color tones the way you want it. So there is a lot of easy manipulation with this kind of technique. My sphinx cat, Dimitri, always loves to come in and snoop around, but it's more demanding that he needs attention and love. Dimitri doesn't care how busy I am. When he wants attention, he'll scream till he gets it. So to get a really worn and rustic effect that I want, I love doing lots of highlights and lowlights. I find that's really key to get a really old world finish. So using any of the light and dark colors and almost repeating over and over again, especially when you do have or have created high points, such as the IOD molds, or if your furniture piece has a lot of wood detail, I do a lot of feathering as well, as you may note in what you're seeing me do here. So you're almost sweeping your brush. And when I'm sweeping, this is where I also make the touch of the bristles get softer and softer. And this is what's gonna really help that transition in your colors from highlights to lowlights. Mm -hmm. 
So the only thing I'm going to do once I've completed the last few steps of this drawer to complete the entire second coat is I'm really not going to need any of the waxes because I've already used a brown and black chalk paint so that's really kind of given it that old dusted look and old world aged appearance but I am going to have to seal this chalk paint project and then we can get into the next step but I'm really happy with how all the shadings worked out and given it that really really rustic elegance of old world look. So to seal a chalk paint project, you can use actually a lacquer, and I use a disposable sponge. But for this particular project, to show you the next step in what I want to create, I'm actually just going to use a clear sealer. And it's in a spray form. It's similar to the lacquer, it's just in the spray form. And again, just make sure you're using a ventilated area. I've laid the dresser onto its back, and you're going to see why. To keep my sealer moist i'm actually just going to add a little bit of water so i'm going to mist water all over where i've just placed the sealer and this is just to keep it moist and what i want to do now is apply milk paint in a dry form and i'm using the granny smith green honeysuckle and some french toast This step is totally optional. You, of course, do not have to do it. I absolutely love it. I think it really, really puts emphasis on old world character. And you're really just adding some dust of age. And by using a couple of the different color tones within the milk paint, it looks so genuine. So I'm just adding a little bit more water and I'm literally just randomly going around and adding to the corners edges and a little bit on the IOD mold. Now because the sealer is still moist and I've added that little bit of water, when I turn this upright again, I'm just going to use an old artist brush here and I'm just going to flick off anything that hasn't actually adhered. So you actually have a bit of control on how much you want. And I love its effect. It really just gives it a little bit of a smoked out aged effect. So really key to adding that little bit of water to help the adhesion of the dry milk paint to get this effect. But I absolutely love it and it's it's it completely adhered on there. It's not going to come off. Again, you don't have to use the spray. You can use the lacquer with the paint. Just remember to add a little bit of water while you're using the milk paint in the dry form. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment box below, as well as hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Looking forward to seeing you next Saturday for another decorative finish with chalk paint. Take care.